Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It. I'm going to tell you all about swamp milkweed. This is a native perennial. Um, it's native to the eastern half of North America, and it grows around four to five feet tall, and you want to space the plants a couple feet apart. But it's very showy. It's a milkweed. The flowers look very similar to common milkweed, but there are a few key differences. Um, the main one being, uh, if you want to identify it, is the leaves. The leaves of uh, swamp milkweed are very narrow and more pointy. Um, if you do a side-by-side -side comparison with common milkweed, the difference is just plain as day. Common milkweed has huge leaves and swamp milkweed has narrow ones. But uh, the other nice thing is uh, common milkweed will spread by uh, underground rhizomes, which are like little roots that go horizontally underground and sprout plants everywhere. Swamp milkweed does not do that. It will spread by seed, but uh, that's pretty manageable. If you uh, have some plants you don't want, you just rip them out. So it won't take over like common milkweed can. Um, also, it is the host plant for the monarch uh, butterfly, just like common milkweed. So if you grow some of these, um, you will get some caterpillars. I always do every year. This year wasn't as good. I, I mean, I didn't have nearly as many. Um, the second year I had these plants, though, I had... Uh, I think I counted 15 caterpillars on one plant by itself. But like I said, it's very showy. It likes full sun, and as the name would suggest, it likes moist soil, moist or medium moisture. Uh, so it can go in some areas that uh, common milkweed, milkweed doesn't do as well. Um, but uh, as you can see here, if you cluster them together with a bunch of other species, you can make a pretty nice little uh, wildflower display. Um, we've uh, got a little backyard prairie and this is in one corner of it and it's just packed with pollinators with all those plants there. You got bee balm, wild bergamot, partridge pea, uh, corea, there's a bunch there but uh, it blooms around uh, one month in duration and it's usually around like July when I see it start blooming so July, August um, and uh, it's a really cool plant and the easiest way to get them is to go gather some seed and plant them. And all you need to do for that is uh, plant them just underneath the soil, not very deep at all. They need to have good contact with the soil and just be covered and then stay moist. Now they need a cold treatment, so you can cold stratify them in the seed, or I'm sorry, cold stratify them in the fridge, or you can winter sow them, which I'll put a card on the right for what I do for winter sowing. Um, but if you want to learn more on uh, cold stratifying seed, uh, we do have an article on our website that tells you how to do it with a moist paper towel, a Ziploc bag, in the fridge. It's pretty easy to do. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it needs around 30 days is what most people say. I have germinated them without cold stratifying, but, you know, it just takes longer. But once you plant them, you just put them in a tray with a plastic dome and some holes and let it sit outside in the snow and the winter and all that. Come spring, and once the temperatures start warming up, they'll germinate usually. Um, the seedlings are, uh, they pretty much look like every other kind of milkweed. That's when they're first starting to get their first true leaves. And uh, after a while, I'll pot them up into a larger pot and let them grow until I uh, have a spot for them, or uh, if I'm growing them for somebody else. But uh, to get seed, though, it's pretty easy. You just have to go find a plant and get the pods. Um, if you want to learn how to separate the seeds, I'll put a card on the right for my way of doing it. It's uh, the cleanest way to separate the seeds without having all that cotton fluff go everywhere. But like I said, it is the host of the monarch butterfly, but it will attract a whole lot of other pollinators. Um, we have uh, big swallowtail butterflies. We have other smaller butterflies. We have tons of bees all over this plant. Um, so if you're trying to do something good for uh, your local ecosystem, this is a pretty good plant to grow. It looks good, it's not too big, it's not very aggressive, and it brings in all the uh, cool bugs and uh, butterflies. So it's one that, you know, you ought to consider. I wish I'd see more people growing it. Um, everyone talks about milkweed, 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 but they're always talking about the regular one that's in the ditches. Well, I've seen this one in ditches too. It's just not as obvious uh, as the uh, common milkweed. But uh, we will have a, I'll put a link down below also uh, to our website. We have a detailed article on this plant, so you could learn how to identify it well before it's blooming. So if you're just driving down a back road and, you know, it might catch your eye, you might be able to find where it is so that you could return there in the fall to go pick out some uh, seed pods. I really haven't seen any diseases on this plant. I've never seen powdery mildew or anything on mine. 
Um, although I have have I do have other plants that do get it in the same location, so I don't know if it's just not susceptible or what. But the only pest I do have is these little orange bugs. These are little uh, I call them milkweed aphids because they're always on my uh, milkweeds, but they're little aphids. And if you don't like them, you can spray them off the garden hose or do nothing. I don't really do anything, and I've never lost a plant. And you see that ladybug? That ladybug's going to go munch on some of those orange bugs. So, um, you know, you bring those the bad insects in, you'll also bring their predators. So it's kind of a balance. But uh, it's a very showy flower. Um, if you guys enjoyed this or learned something, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. We kind of a you know, a wildlife-based channel, I guess, or plant-based with some DIY thrown in. Um, but, uh, and this is a really cool plant, man. You got to take a shot at it and try to grow some. It's pretty easy to grow, and it'll look good for a long time for a perennial. And, uh, yeah, so that's about it. Thank you guys very much for watching.